Welcome back, Shalligators. Kate Middleton's alive. This is great. I'm so excited. I'm excited that Kate's alive because, you know, we love her. We love her. And she appears to be happy and healthy in a video that is just at the time of me filming this, like just at the airwaves of her trotting around a little farmer's market with her husband. And she looks um, like a person. She doesn't look like a hologram that the palace generated. And, you know, I think everyone was starting to get really worried that something very bad was going on. I mean, what bad we knew was going on was a whole lot of really bad rumors, um, including the one we discussed in our last video that basically William had been having an affair, gotten his mistress pregnant, and Kate just like snapped. And whose fault is this? Uh, no, not ours, because we're allowed to talk about something that doesn't make sense. And why didn't it make sense? Why was everyone so twisted about this? And why did everyone sink their teeth into something that, you know, from the 30,000 foot view, isn't that remarkable? Someone takes some time off work, essentially. We all sunk our teeth into it because the palace bungled this so bad, so badly. This was just the PR blunder of the decade for these people. And it's like, how could they have gotten this so wrong? How could they have released like some AI photo of Kate and her children on Mother's Day and thought no one was gonna notice and then came out with an even more ridiculous like statement from Kate when maybe the truth of this whole fiasco was she was sick. She was recovering from a surgery. She was going through a health thing. Why not just say that? It's pretty relatable, it's normal. We knew she was having surgery. Why couldn't the palace or Kate herself just been like, hey, it's taking me a really long time to recover. I'm gonna take a few months off, better safe than sorry, but I'll be back seeing you guys soon. I don't even think that would have been more than a blip in the news cycle. But when someone's a bad liar, and I'm not saying it's Kate, I blame the palace. There's blood in the water. You know, there's a lot of skills that we need to move through life. Uh, none of the skills that they're teaching in school. I'm sorry, uh, what the fuck is a cosine wave? Is that tangent? I don't know. And I went through school and I got great grades and I still have gun to my head, I couldn't tell you. I think it goes like that, A plus. One of the skills they should be teaching is how to be a good liar. But society doesn't want you to be a liar. It's very inconvenient for everyone else if you are a good liar. Too bad. I'm the girl that does Eve week, just in case you're not sure. So today, we're gonna talk about how to do things that the palace might need a few tips on. How to tell an effective lie. How to basically gaslight and convince people that you're not up to what you're up to. I'm gonna tell you some scientifically proven things about lying and give you some tips on how to be a better liar yourself. Listen, we'll just say up front, don't use this for nefarious purposes. Don't pick on the weak, the vulnerable, the trusting people who love you and just run some game on them. That's gross. That's gross and weird. No, we're not gonna do that. We are going to look at lying like a tool in a craftsman's toolbox, right? And craftsmen, they have all these weird special tools. You know, they don't just have a hammer and a screwdriver and that's it. They got a whole bunch of weird stuff. Go into Home Depot. It's an absolute wonderland of, I don't even fucking know what this stuff is. It's gonna be a tool in there for very specialized jobs, for times when that's really the only solution. Nothing else will work except for this one specific tool. Nay, a weapon. I believe being a good liar is a survival mechanism. You need to be able to lie your way out of danger. If a man corners you in your house, if a boss is being shitty to you, if you have an enemy, the difference between sinking or swimming is very often your ability to deceive someone else. And remember, the people who are gonna tell you that you shouldn't do this are trying to gain power over you. They're not actually interested in what's best for you because what's best for you probably isn't what's best for them. And hey, if it's gonna be you versus them, the answer to them is gonna be clear. You're gonna take a back seat. I'm here to empower you to be an actual alpha. And that means you don't just develop the good things to keep sweet and live, laugh, love. No, you develop the dark side too. And that way you'll be able to wield it as you see fit. You won't just be a sitting duck. You won't be prey. You will now be predator. Like I said, I'm the girl that does evil week. <laughs> Haven't you heard? I'm the crazy bitch around here. 
Before we get into this, if you want to watch Evil Week, the last two years of it are in one place only, the Chalantourage. It's our cozy corner of the internet, our members only club. You get five videos a week from me, advice, deep dives, story times. Speaking of evil, um, I had two beers the other day, which for me is like a billion. And I did like a drunken video because I ran into one of my enemies and I'll tell you how it went. I'll tell you exactly how I behaved to her. And I, I hate her. I hate this woman. She's, ugh, hate her. Posture of a beanbag chair. And I will tell you exactly how to deal with an enemy in a way that keeps your reputation perfect, but lets them know they got a fucking target on their back. Plus you get access to 19 group chats with uh, girls from all over the world. People meet up, they go on vacation together. So go ahead and click the link down below and join us. It's the best place in the whole wide world. But if you need some one-on-one -on -one advice, find me on passes.com. You can click that link down below and I get back to you in just 48 hours. Okay, lying. Yeah, let's talk about Kate just, just for another minute. The palace lost our trust when they released that weird Mother's Day photo. And then again, like we said, followed it up with that even like more sus explanation when something truth adjacent would have been fine, would have been fine. Like even if Kate did have a mental breakdown, we're in the golden age of my mental health. <laughs> if she just would have, or somebody in her voice would have been like, hey, kind of been going through it. I need to take a beat, focus on my mental health, focus on my nutrition. I'll, I'll hit you, I'll be back in a few months. Everyone who would have pushed back against that would have been considered a monster. I mean, I wouldn't have said anything about it. Like, oh, okay, she's got three kids and she's in the public eye. Dude, I would have been crazy a long ass time ago. That's fine, take your time. That's an example of a truth adjacent lie. Because again, that would be adjacent to the truth of maybe William did have a mistress that he knocked up and she's like strapped down to a gurney in Bellevue. I don't know. But the lie, the one statement they chose to come out with, first of all, illuminated nothing. It answered zero questions. Like a lot of people, I'm experimenting with Photoshop. What? What? We're expected to believe that Kate Middleton has an Adobe suite on like her Dell computer? I find that a little hard to believe. I find that a little hard to believe. So it's like they used this one opportunity. They were gonna say something and they chose to come out with like an irredemptive nothing burger of a lie that only hurt them. It only served to degenerate trust that people had in the palace. And therefore, I don't think any of us can be blamed for being like, what's the story? And coming up with some pretty wild theories that you know what? Still haven't necessarily been debunked. And by the way, you know, it's so funny on the last video, First of all, people are like, you're only using her for clicks. Do you understand the theme of this channel? I use all celebrities for clicks. That's, it's a gossip channel. It's actually an advice channel with a gossip hook. I'm always so surprised when people can't quite get that concept. Life just must be pretty difficult for you. Okay. And then people are like, the, the rumor affair has been debunked by who? Insiders? So you, you won't believe insiders who say that it's true, but you will believe insiders who say it's not true. This is how logic works to you. It's basically, I choose to believe it's not true. Fine, choose to believe whatever you want, but don't present that choice as fact, as empirical data. It's not, it's your choice, it's your opinion. And it's interesting, I'm not allowed to have an opinion and believe what I want, but you are. Again, life is probably a pretty scary place for you. Boy, oh boy. So let's talk about lies. Oh, first, let's talk about this necklace. This is my friend. I'm sorry, it's a little bright. Do you want me to take it off? It's kind of, I didn't think it was gonna reflect. It's a coin, it's an 1889 silver dollar. And my friend Julie makes these necklaces. DM her, she's Julie's Gold Coins. Julie's Gold Coins on Instagram. She ships in the US, only the US because of like tariffs. Isn't this cool? And she, they're like one of one. She like basically custom makes them. You can get different chains, different coins. Like they're not all the same. They're all like completely unique, obviously. But, oh, okay, that's better. It's not so shiny, just just my shiny skin. But I love these things. I wear, I pair them, I layer them. Oh, they're just great with like a white t-shirt or something or like a little bodysuit. Okay, let's talk lies. <sighs> Everyone lies. Everyone lies. There's two types of lies. There's white lies and there's strategic lies. White lies are basically the lube of society. <laughs> they are. They are the spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down or that just makes you think you're not taking medicine at all. It's actually just a spoonful of sugar, no medicine. Think of a white lie. 
do I look okay in this? You look great, girl, yeah. She did not look great. She did not look great. But what are you gonna say? Oh, well, you look fat. And that's that's because you are fat. And you look fat in everything because you're fat. We tell white lies uh, basically from a survival standpoint because we are tribal creatures. We're pack animals. And if you start really shooting people straight, guess who's out of the pack? You can sleep outside with the wildebeest suddenly. People don't want to be around you. And we have to learn to apply that lube for a more frictionless social experience, right? It is, in many ways, the glue that holds life together. The second kind of lies, strategic. Strategic lies are someone lying for a purpose, with the intention to deceive for personal gain. Now that doesn't mean it's nefarious. You do it, we all do it. Think about when you're late to work. Are you like, hey, um, I'm late to work because I stopped and get a Frappuccino because I don't want to be here. Yeah, I walk into my gym and I've just started saying like, sorry, I'm late, I don't want to be here for my trainer appointment. They're like, fair enough. I'm like, that's, I'm just, I stayed in the parking lot as long as I could until I realized you'd be mad. And now here I am. Typically though, we will lie. You're lying to spare consequence, to spare someone's feelings, to not rock the boat. Of course, there's some people, strategic terrible lies, they run amok. They're con artists, you know, they're pathological liars. Everything they say is a fib and they seem to do it almost for sport. I had an ex like this. Have I told you the weather story? We were in Costa Rica and I woke up after him in the morning and he's like, babe, you missed the biggest storm. I was like, really? I love storms. And he's like, yeah, I was like hurricane winds and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, we're walking around. And I'm like, nothing's wet. There's no, there's no puddles. And I start to ask the staff, did it rain this morning? They're like, no. I asked the guests, were you guys up? Did it rain? They're like, no. I finally asked the manager and they're like, it would never rain right now, it's the dry season. I checked with the National Weather Service of Costa Rica. It didn't rain. And I confronted him and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you say that? I said, if you ever lie to me again, I'll never speak to you. And he exploded. No, no, because I texted my friends about this. They're like, this is some Dateline shit. Like, this is bad, Shallon. This is bad. And I was like, I know this is bad. I confronted him. Somehow I ended up apologizing to him. Right? You've been in that scenario. You're like, well, I'm sorry. Okay. It's like, I must've been dreaming. No one who's having a dream is that positional. You know, you're like, no, there was an elephant in the, in the Walmart. There's, that was a dream. There was not an elephant in the Walmart. No, sorry. But like he, he was like, nope, it rained. And I remember saying at the time to my friends, you know what? If he has to tell these weird little lies to, I don't know, seem interesting, have something to say, I don't know. That's fine. I know he's not lying to me about the big things. Uh, spoiler alert, yes he was. Everything. I believe now he was lying about where he went to college. I don't think he did go. Um, his family, um, all the people he was cheating on me with. Everything, everything. And it's like, why? That was neither a white lie nor a strategic lie. And those are the ones that are really scary to encounter. So little hot tip for you, if someone lies like that for sport, just for sport, fucking run, run, run. I'm telling you, God, please learn. Please learn from me. If you have a story about a liar, please comment it down below because, oh my God, did I tell you this? One, a girl I knew, she was my friend's, my old roommate, one of her friends. Let's call her, what was her name? Beth, her name was Beth. Beth was in a relationship with a man for I think three years. They had a baby together, got married. Through the course of their divorce, she found out that the entire time he was pretending to be British. A baby with that man. A baby. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Crazy. Anyway, how do we avoid the same fate? 
How do we tell an effective lie? Okay, like I said, there are those two types of lies. Really good liars do two things. They have, they plan it out. They, if they're executing a grand scheme, they plan it out, okay? Because they're thinking 10 steps ahead. And number two, they believe they have the right to lie. Not that they believe the lie. They believe they have the right to lie. Do you know how polygraph works, a lie detector? It measures stress because we as human beings, we don't like to lie. And there are physical tells. Our blood pressure goes up. We like sweat a little bit. Our pupils dilate, blah, 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 because it's a stress response. It's cognitive dissonance on steroids. Cognitive dissonance means what's going on does not match what I want to be going on. I hate my job. I have to work six days a week, right? And it's this internal stress, but it's concentrated because we're telling a lie. And so people who can pass a polygraph, they don't have that stress response because they don't give a fuck that they're lying. People who can also pass a polygraph who aren't necessarily sociopaths or something, they believe that they have the right to lie. So it's like, a, say they had to steal to feed their family, right? They will not have a stress response. They will have a higher chance of passing a polygraph because they believe they're justified in doing it. So they're not gonna have that cause, cognitive dissonance of like, ooh, this is wrong. If they killed a pedophile, smooth sailing, baby. So that is truly the foundation of a successful liar because nonverbal is what gives us away. Our body language very often gives us away. There's tells, you rub the back of your neck, you touch your mouth, because subconsciously you wanna hold the lie in, right? Your body language closes off, you lean back, you lean physically away from the person you look down, but you know, it is a misnomer that liars can't look you in the eyes. Yes, they can. It's a practice thing because a lot of times liars look you in the eye because they want to see if you believe them. So beware of someone who's like, you know, I had a hard day and my grandmother died and they look up at you and for a second they freeze. The character breaks, the characters over here, their character breaks and they look up at you like, right? Did you, did you buy that? Oh, you did. Okay. And then anyway, and then, the, and then my cat got run over. It's subtle. These are micro reactions. These are micro reactions. What can we learn from this? Keep your eyes on someone. If you're gonna look down and sell the lie, keep looking down. And then my grandmother and then the cat, I just, no, it's okay, I don't know. You bring your gaze slowly back up to them, not this flashback, right? You're gonna give yourself away. And in the moment, the person who you're lying to might not be like, wait, you just looked up at me too fast. They're not gonna, it's not like they're gonna connect to this, but their intuition, their animal brain is gonna be like, huh, sus. And if you lie enough, it's going to add up and add up and add up. Or you're gonna start to tell your friends about this and they're gonna be like, you know what? I've noticed something weird about her too, really. This is why gossip is actually beneficial and I will never apologize for gossiping about celebrities because we learn collectively from them. We extrapolate lessons from their behavior. Whether or not we like the celebrity is in, in really immaterial. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really care about any of these people. I care about what we can learn from them, okay? And in that sense, gossip is actually crucial for a population. It's crucial to stave off and to suss out the deceivers and toxic manipulators. We need to always get a pattern on what's going on. So we're like, okay, I wasn't alone on this. We can't always feel like we can trust our intuition. You know, we can trust data. We can trust patterns. Pattern recognition is the number one strength of a human being. Number one strength. You see someone who's like screaming and shouting and they're dressed in rags, walking towards you on the sidewalk. What do you do? I cross the street because my pattern recognition system is like, no thanks. I don't care if I look mean. I don't care if I look racist or any kind of phobic. I'm crossing the street. I would rather look any of those things than dead. That's not a look I'm after. So never be afraid to recognize patterns. And remember that the people who don't want you to be pattern collecting are the people trying to gain power over you. If you have a big lie to tell, you need to practice it. And you need to be kind of self gaslighting about why it's okay that you tell this lie. I have to tell my boyfriend that I've been faithful, even though I'm absolutely sleeping with a guy uh, down the hall from me, because I need to protect, oh, I need to protect him from myself, okay? So now you have flipped the cognitive dissonance into I am cheating on a man who has done nothing wrong. He's not abusive, he's not this, he's not that. 
but hold on, I'm not the bad guy. I'm actually the good guy. I'm a protector. Oh my gosh, look at me go. <laughs> I'm Nelson Mandela. I am protecting this man I love by lying to him. I'm doing them a favor. What good would it be to just tell them the truth and hurt them? Listen, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I don't think you should be cheating on people, but if just if you're gonna cheat, literally just leave. Don't come clean and hurt this poor person for no reason. Just go, just go, just be on your way. You know, they don't need to see how the sausage is made or why, just keep it moving. But you need to convince yourself that you're doing the right thing. That is going to be instrumental in you selling it. It will also be instrumental in you coming up with the necessary subsequent lies to keep getting away from it. Did you guys watch the movie, oops, sorry, on Netflix, uh, Ricky Stanicki? <laughs> so bad it's like with Zac Efron and John Cena it's like a so bad but they so they've invented this this friend Ricky Stanicki to like as like an excuse like oh Ricky's in the hospital gotta leave the baby shower you know and they have a notebook of the lies and they keep track it's like okay Ricky's in the hospital again last time this happened was April 23rd blah 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 and so they're writing all of it down any good criminal they're organized, hence the term organized crime. You know, Pablo Escobar, John Gotti, all these crime bosses, the El Chapo dude, they're organized criminals. They're keeping records. They're making notes. They're planning ahead. The sloppy criminals, the smash and grabbers, they get caught pretty quick. There's no plan. There's no organization. It's like anything else. If you wanna execute it properly, you gotta write shit down. You have to keep very meticulous notes. And that goes for lies. That goes for opening a flower store at a farmer's market. Records are necessary. Now, what are the point of records besides just keeping track of your lies? A criminal enterprise. Where are you going with this? If you are lying for sport, you need to get some help. Uh, you do, you do. My ex who was lying about the weather, he should be in, in, in an institution right now. He should be studied by science because what in the actual fuck is that? That is not okay. That's not okay. I was almost more mad about that than the lies he would tell me to cover his cheating because I understood why he was lying to cover his cheating. I would have done the same thing if I was, you know, living my life that way. I didn't and I never will and I never will understand why he lied about that. It just never would make sense to me. I don't understand a thrill killing. I'm not a particularly moral person, but I don't lie just for fun. It's a hassle, you know, like it's a hassle. Also, I'm such a narcissist. I believe that whatever my truth is, is amazing. Oh no, this is what I've been doing. Oh, if anything, I tone things down. I'm not like dialing them up. I'm like toning things down. Like, so yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. If you're, if you're thrill lying, here's why I think my ex did it is because his parents didn't pay enough attention to him. And so he couldn't ever just be like, I have a tummy ache and get mommy's attention. It's, I swallowed glass and I'm puking blood. And blah, blah, blah. it always had to be like the most fantastical tale ever to get any eyes on him. And I, I had at times like grabbed him by the ears. I'm like, I am paying attention to you. You don't need a 20 minute phantasmagorical odyssey about your Uber ride over here. Just like enough enough you are fine boring you're better you're better but that was just his coding it was baked in because he wasn't trying to change it because he wasn't acknowledging it if you are hearing some like uncomfortable resonance in what i'm saying i think you need to look at the at the possibility that you don't feel like you're good enough just telling the truth what would happen if you were just regular schmegular degular boring What'd you do last night? I watched Downton Abbey. What if you could just say that? What if you could just say that? What would be the monster under the bed? Well, people aren't gonna like me. I've got news for you. Nobody likes a liar. And if you're a thrill liar, if you're a pathological liar, honey, people know. Like, people know. You are actually not fooling as many folks as you think. And it is cringe as fuck. And if you just started being low key and telling the truth, 
it's like you're you're creating your worst case scenario. You're creating the rejection you are so desperately afraid of by being chronically untruthful and weird. It's weird. If you have a big lie that you need to tell for a reason, you need to write this out like it's the plot of a movie. Where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? Here's how to how to figure it out. Reverse engineer it. Reverse engineer it. Let's say you're cheating on someone, okay? And I do have an Evil Week video on how to cheat and get away with it. It was like one of the first Evil Weeks I did a few years ago. Go back and revisit it. It's great. And people always like, they always cite that video when they're looking to shred me. Oh, she's a monster. Yeah, I know that. Next question. That's all you got? I mean, it's like saying, oh my God, look at this video we found. She's blonde. Yeah. I, we all got it. Let's say that that's your scenario. You need to lie to cheat. Where are you going with this? What is your end game? What is your end game? To have a full blown second relationship? Okay. Okay. Let's say that that's it. You want a full ass second boyfriend or boyfriend in addition to your husband. All right. Do whatever you want. I don't care. You have to look at every possible way you are going to get caught. What are the chinks in your armor? What are the gaps in the fence? And you gotta be really, really honest with yourself. Because if you're like, oh, my boyfriend's so dumb, he'll never notice. Yeah, he will. And if he doesn't, you better believe some of his friends will. You're not as clever as you think you are. When you think about criminals who get caught, it's hubris. You know, they don't bother to wear a mask or gloves. Yeah, these cops are fucking dumb. You watch Dateline and it's always these like small town detectives that the criminal is underestimating. And it's like, we knew he thought he was the smartest guy in the room trying to run a game on us and figure out what we know. In the end, they get him. They get him. Do not underestimate the people around you. Assume that they're smarter than you. Assume that they are patrolling for, for untruths at all times, at all times. A great way to sell a lie is to make sure you keep your victim happy. Keep them placid. Keep them coming back for more. Don't rock the boat. Give them the things they want the most. My ex kept me in the dark about his insane extracurricular activities for a very long time because he honed in on the thing I wanted the most in that relationship, which was a supportive partner, a cheerleader. It was when I was kind of transitioning out of one career and into the next. And I, I wouldn't be here, I hate to say it, without his support and without his like cheering me on and advice and really just being like a rider for me, you know? And even when I was getting red flags and even when my friends were flat out telling me there is something wrong with that man, I was like, I can't let him go because with it goes my sort of offloaded sense of self-esteem, my sense of confidence. I don't know who I would be without him in my corner. So you know what? I'm going to turn a blind eye to some of this. It's, it was not my finest hour, but it was very clever on his part to do that. He made himself indispensable. Okay? So if you were going to lie to someone, either strategically for a, like a very specific purpose, and there's like one big long con you're going for here, or if you're just kind of a chronic liar, I mean, listen, if you can't be honest with anyone else, be honest with yourself right now and be like, all right, that is who I am. You need to be the best ex you can to that person, fill in the blank. The best daughter, the best employee, the best girlfriend, the best bestie, what is it? Now you need to step outside yourself right now and ask yourself, what does that person need above everything else? And if you don't know, why don't you ask them? What would make you so happy as a mom? I'm your bestie, I love you. What do you, like, how, how's our friendship? Like, what do you need from me? You're going through a time right now, like, what do you need? Just the fact that you're asking will throw a lot of people off the scent. It will. It will make you look selfless. Selfless people don't lie. Mm, yeah. You know, I also think I need to point out that I teach you guys these things, not just so we can move through life as some sort of like goblin person being deceptive, but to understand the games that are getting run against us. Like, are you recognizing this mirrored behavior? Like, are you seeing some of this in people you know that you're like, huh, no, my friend pays for everything because she knows I don't make a lot of money. But yeah, then she tells these weird lies, like these crazy fantastical stories that I always like believe or pretend like I believe because 
She's picking up the bill at Katsuya. How interesting. Sometimes it takes a thief to catch a thief, you know? And so I want you to see the evil out there. Even if you don't want to use it yourself, that's fine. Be aware that it could be used against you. Forewarned is forearmed. So you got to look at the, not only the gaps in your fences, how you might be betraying yourself, and you have to look at the gaps in the fences of others. How can you fill theirs in? How can you be of service to them? And therefore, they're going to take not a very hard look at your life. If you're doing something for them, they're not really incentivized to blow that dynamic up and take away something that's instrumental. Press on that. Press on that in a variety of categories. If you want to solidify power, ingratiate yourself to someone, be useful. Be useful. And therefore, the flip side of this is if you're dealing with someone who is trying to get into your life or into your pants, you can look at them and much more clearly snap into the idea of what are you doing for me lately? I said this to a guy recently. I've actually had to say it to him twice, one year apart. If you're in the Chalantras, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This guy was like all over me in London. Oh, I like you, come home with me. And I was like, what's in this for me? Does that sound familiar? Because I said it a year ago when I first met him. History repeated itself almost verbatim. This last time I was in London, it was, I'm like, dude, what is, what's in this for me? Like, you're not, ah, you're not bringing anything to the table here that would incentivize me to go home with you. Why would I? I could go home with any man in this place. Why would it be you? Hmm. And I am able to say that with a straight face and fucking mean it because I understand evil. I understand games run on us. I know all the games they play. I play them too. And so I can gird against them faster and more effectively because I am well acquainted with it. And I don't shy away from evil behavior. I embrace it. Either I'm going to use it myself or I'm going to make sure it's not used against me. Last but not least, never be afraid to use pity. The number one thing manipulative people want is pity. Sob stories get you very far, very, very far. I guarantee if you look at the people who have manipulated you over your life, like big betrayals, somewhere in there, there was a sob story. There was a pity story. And I'm not saying that those pity stories were false. They can, they can absolutely be true, but they're being wielded in a way that is designed to manipulate and more than just manipulate, distract. They're designed to throw you off the scent. So that even if you know that you're seeing what you're seeing, the pity's gonna come in and it's gonna be like, wow, wow, fuck you. There's a girl I went to high school with. Um, she is, do you remember the video we did on Scamanda, the podcast about that chick, Amanda, who pretended she had cancer for like seven years? A girl I went to high school with is like this. She's probably gonna see this and be like, she's bullying me again. Sweetheart, you haven't even begun to see what me bullying someone looks like. Sit your ass down. She has lied about her health for, I mean, her entire, a decade, oh, 15 years, I don't know, a very long time. And the lies just keep escalating. Nothing she says is true. I'm sorry, is she, she's a liar. And every time anyone pushes back on her, how could you do this? I'm terminal. Terminal with what? Funny, it's never been named. That's interesting. And as soon as people push back with her, there's a, there's a new, more serious diagnosis that comes down the pipeline a week later. Hmm, hmm. I am able to call this person out because I don't give a fuck about people calling me a monster. Like I said, I am a monster. I've been called that before. I don't necessarily disagree with it. Once you slay the dragon of live, laugh, love, the live, laugh, love dragon that lives in the wooden sign aisle at Home Goods, that's where it lives, amongst the scented candles. And once you embrace being hated, ah, ironically, you have no reason to lie. Isn't that interesting? When people hate you is when you can begin telling the truth. What the fuck is the consequence? You're going to hate me? You already hate me. Okay. I might as well like tell it like I see it. Call it out. Whatever. The greatest thing someone can do for you is hate you. Then you're free. You don't have to pacify anyone. Those white lies, they're gone. That frictionless experience you're trying to make in the world, not for you. Let's friction it up. Call me sandpaper. 
So don't be afraid of that. But we're not talking about the truth. We're talking about lies. So have some pitiful antics up your sleeve. Have some pity party sob story and make sure you tailor it to your audience, right? People have different levels of empathy. I am not a especially empathetic person. Um, it's very targeted. It's very like pet centric, you know, and like children, a lot. Mm, yeah, I doesn't flow from me like a river. So when people come at me with a sob story and it's funny, they'll run, like they will miscalculate their audience. They will not read the room well, you know? They come at me with a sob story that's like, you are appealing to emotions I don't have. And now that you're doing that, fuck, you really screwed yourself because I can see the machinations. I can see the wheels turning. I can see your plan here. And now I identify you as a toxic, manipulative person. And now we're enemies. And this is gonna go real bad for you. And that's the thing with this, this girl from my high school who lies about her health. Like, I can see what you're doing. And now that I can see it, there's blood in the water and it's all over for you, baby. I don't appreciate people trying to take money from good, honest, empathetic, genuine folks out there. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. I don't like a con man. My daddy was one and I didn't like him either. And if I didn't like him, you think I'm going to like you? <laughs> That's interesting. You think I'm going to give you the dispensations I wouldn't give to my own flesh and blood? It's a bad bet. So you want to make sure that your pity party, your sob story is, is barking up the right tree. If your friend is a single mom and you're trying to run a game on her, which by the way, don't, that's shitty. But like appeal to like, I'm so overwhelmed and I'm doing things on my own, but she's going to be like, oh yeah, of course. You in your pity story, you want to mirror what their pity story would be. The exception to this is if you're trying to sell this sob story to someone who's even more toxic, right? Because if you try to sell, let's say the single mom story, oh my God, and you try to sell the martyr the victim complex to the friend. If they're a narcissist, like the martyr version of a narcissist, they're gonna be like, oh, you think you're the burnt toast mom? I'm the burnt toast mom. And it's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up in your face. So in that sense, you're gonna have to take kind of an opposite tactic. You're gonna have to do a pity party, a pity story that is not competitive with theirs. There's a lot of work that goes into being a really effective liar, essentially an emotional con artist. It's a lot of work. You know, and again, the truth is easier. Like I said, I'm such a, I'm so like self-absorbed. I believe anything I say is like fantastic. So why on earth would I lie? I don't have the energy. There's just like, I don't know. It, I, I think I'm too proud. Like I'm, I think too highly of myself to be like, oh, I'm a liar. Like, ex no. No. I mean, I'll tell the white lies of like, oh, you look great in that dress. I'll lie about why I'm late for some the little ones. But like to execute a big long con, it's like, why would I do that? I don't know. I would rather be persuasive, you know, like convince something that, hey, this is in your best interest or be seductive rather than like, here's a lie. Rah, rah, rah. But sometimes, like I said, it's necessary. Sometimes, Sometimes this is a, a weapon we need in our arsenal. If for no other reason, like I keep saying, to gird against it when it is potentially used against us. Are you a good liar? Tell me some of your tricks and secrets. How do you spot a liar? Do you know how? Tell me some of the things that you've learned. What is the worst lie you've ever told? What is the worst lie that someone has told to you? Are you going to tell me something in the comments that's going to blow that weather story out of the water? Honestly, I hope not. God, I hope, I hope not. I, but I know, I know. And there were, I know that there was that lady in the BMW. What's her name? Like Tisha Misha. It's not that, but you know what I mean? I'm sorry. I'm bungling that. I could look it up, but my brain is like seizing up right now. But damn, the who the fuck did I marry woman? That poor woman. Someone get her a Netflix show. Put her in Congress. Put her in Congress. I would trust her. She doesn't, she doesn't like liars. And I feel like she'd root them out. She'd smoke them out. Okay. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that this is the end of the Kate Middleton question mark saga? 
Or do you think that stuff is gonna come out and maybe this is the tip of the iceberg? I don't know. And like I said, if you want to connect with me, get some advice, binge Evil Week and learn more evil things, head to the Chalantrage. Uh, you got all of that included. Link is down below. If you want some one-on-one -on -one help with me, maybe about something evil, how to craft a lie, head to passes.com. Link is right down below and you can get an audio note or a custom video, whatever tickles you fancy. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Oh, and don't forget to go to Instagram, Julie's Gold Coins, and shop my friend's necklace. Just DM her to shop. Okay, love you guys. Mwah!